everyone. Welcome back to chapter 2.2 calorimeter. This is our second part of the video in which we are going to look into um, the example questions 1, 2, 3, 4. So for the questions 1, 50 gram of metal is heated. So in this case, we have our mass of metal is heated to 100 degrees Celsius. So this is the initial temperature um, for metal. And plunk into the water. So in this case, we have mass of water and we have the initial temperature of water. So the temperature of the resulting mixture is 28 degrees Celsius. So this is the final temperature and it is the same for both metal and water. Then determine your specific heat capacity and heat capacity of the metal. So in this case, we have the specific capacity small metal and the heat capacity capital letter M and given the specific heat capacity of the water. For this simple diagram, if let's say this is your metal with five uh, with 50 gram and the initial temperature is 100 degrees Celsius and it's transferred into the water which is 100 milliliter which is also the same as 100 gram as the density equals to 1 gram per milliliter. And for this water, it has the initial temperature 24 degrees Celsius. So we know that uh, the heat will be released from the metal and this 100 degrees Celsius will decrease. And the heat will absorb by the water in which the temperature will increase until the final temperature 28 degrees Celsius. So now the formula is the heat released by the metal the heat absorbed by the water. So both of it using MC delta T. Okay, because mass of the metal is given, mass of the water is also given. Informations we know that heat is released. Normally we will, we will use the negative signs to represent and then heat absorbed with a positive sign. But when we are applying this uh, formula, uh, Madam suggests that you don't put the negative sign. Okay, you don't put the negative sign. So whatever is released from the metal or from the reactions, it will be absorbed by the water. So we substitute the value mass of metal 50 and sp uh, specific heat capacity we want to find. The difference in temperature for metal. So let's look at this one. Initial is 100 and the final temperature is 28. So we're using a higher value minus a lower value. Okay, higher value minus a, a lower value. So that in the whole terms here, it will give you a positive value. Okay, and then for the water, initial is 24, final is 28. So again, the same thing using higher temperature minus lower temperature. So the whole terms here will give you a positive value. So solving your equation to get the specific heat capacity of metal. Right equals to 0 0.464 joule per gram per degree Celsius. Take note, specific heat capacity, the unit is joule per gram per degree Celsius. So the next thing is after you got this specific heat capacity, we want to find heat capacity. Oh, heat capacity with a unit in joule per degree Celsius. So we want to eliminate the mass. Oh. So uh, heat capacity equals to mass times with the specific one. So in this case, 50 gram of the metal multiplied with the specific capacity to get the value. All right, so mass in gram cancel with the per gram in your specific capacity, 23.2 joule per degree Celsius. All right, so move on to our next example, questions number three. Given a quantity of naphthalene C10H8, so this is the mass of naphthalene, in which then you can find the number of mole from this mass, was burned in bond carimeter. So this is related to enthalpy of combustion. So the information here, you can calculate for the delta T. If the mass of water surrounding the carimeter was exactly 2000 gram, so in this case, we have mass of water and the heat capacity of the bond carolimeter was 1.80 kilojoule per degree Celsius. 
So this is the capital letter C, your heat capacity for calorimeter. Please take notes on the units. Oh, this one is in kilojoule. You need to make it the same as uh, the one for water. Joule per gram. So you need to make it joule. So we convert it first into 1,800 joule per degree Celsius. So to calculate the heat of combustion of naphthalene in kilojoule per mole. Heat of combustion is the same as the enthalpy of combustion. And the question is request to be in kilojoule per mole. Alright, so if you refer to this simple diagram, okay, when we burn the naphthalene, say that this um, mass of naphthalene, 1.435 gram. So when you burn it, okay, the heat is released from this reaction. And the heat release will then be absorbed by the calorimeter. Okay, because you have the heat capacity for calorimeter, you have the information. And it also absorbed by the water containing its side because you have the mass of water. Okay, so both water and calorimeter absorb the heat. So let's come up with your balance equation, your thermochemical equation for this combustion reactions. Okay, together with this enthalpy in negative value as heat is released. So for number of moles, Using the mass given, divide by the molar mass. You can find the molar mass from the molecular formula, which gives you 0 0.0112 mole. So Q combustions, that means that heat is released by combustion, will be absorbed by water and calorimeter. Okay, so this will be the formula. And to be more exact, we need to uh, further expand the formula. So Q water, we have the MC delta T for water plus the heat for calorimeter. So, so substitute your value. Okay, so if you want to see it, this mass is in joule, this is in joule per degree, uh, per gram per degree Celsius, this is in degree Celsius. So when you cancel off, it only left with joule. Okay, and then in this case, why you need to keep it the same as joule per degree Celsius, because this is the equation. Okay, you need to make sure both uh, units are the same. So the answer given here is in unit joule. Alright, so after figure out number of more naphthalene and the heat change, for both of this information, it means that when I completely combusted this much of naphthalene, this energy is released. But this is not one mole. So in order to find our enthalpy of naphthalene in kilojoule per mole, we need to find um, if we combust one mole of naphthalene, how much heat will be released? Therefore, we need to apply stoichiometry. Okay, so for this one, 0 0.0112 mole of naphthalene is combusted. It will release this much of energy. So I'm putting negative signs when I want to find delta H. So negative, it means that energy is released. To combust one more of naphthalene, this much of energy will be released. So doing cross multiplications to get the answer. So the stoichiometry over here, the first one, it uh, refers to the Q in which uh, any amount of substance is combusted. Uh, so it released this much of energy. And the bottom one for one more, that one refers to your enthalpy. So finally, to write your final answer, enthalpy of combustion equals to negative 5143.5 kilojoules per mole. So you are converting this one in kilojoule and it is for one mole, therefore per mole. All right, so move on to questions three. Enthalpy of combustion of benzoic acid is, or well, given the value here, kilojoule per mole. So we write it first. This is the enthalpy of combustion. So when 3.2 gram benzoic acid is completely combusted, so this 3.2 refer to the substance, okay, the substance that we are going to burn. So I label this one with the formula of benzoic acid. Okay, in calorimeter containing 2 kilo of water. So this 2 kilo water, please make sure you change it to unit gram as the specific capacity will be in unit um, per gram. 
Okay, so we convert first mass of water equals to 2000 gram. And the temperature of water increased by 3.8 degrees Celsius. So given already, delta T. Calculate the heat capacity of calorimeter. So first of all, start off with your balanced chemi uh, thermochemical equation. Don't forget the delta H, which is already given in the questions. Uh, now combustions, we are focusing on the substance that is combusted. All right, so you need to find the mole of this um, benzoic acid. So given in the questions, we have 3.2 gram. So divide by the molar mass, you got 0.0223 mole. So the difference between questions 2 and question 3. In question 3, you are given this delta H. So we know that if we burn one mole of benzoic acid, this much of energy will release. So therefore, from your stoichiometry relation, you can find the Q. Alright, so according to the balance equation, according to your stoichiometry, one more benzoic acid combusted, you will release this much of energy. Okay, but pay attention to this part. Madam, change it to Joule. Okay, from kilo Joule, we change it to Joule because now what we want to find is the Q. Also, take notes, Madam didn't put any negative sign in front of it because when we want to solve for the Q formula or the Q equation, um, you don't have to put negative sign, okay, to avoid mistake or to minimize the mistake. So for this Q, since we know that we are only burning 3.2 gram, so for 0.02623 mole of benzoic acid, do your cross multiplications. This much of energy, okay, this much of heat will release. And we say that the Q combustions equals to the values here, Joule. Okay, so next we'll be forming the formula according to these questions. We know that the heat is released from combustions, heat is absorbed by water, as well as calorimeter. So the formula Q combustions equals to QW plus Q cow. So we have MC delta T for water, C delta T for calorimeter. So substitute this value, your Q combustions, into here. And the mass of water, specific heat capacity, um, the delta T, and we need to find this heat capacity for calorimeter. Both delta T are the same. So the final answer for this. Uh, heat capacity, 139, 12.72 Joule per degree Celsius. Right, next example, question 4 related to scenario 3. So look at this question, 25 milliliters of 1.0 molar HCl. So the first information we can get from here is the number of moles for HCl. All right, it's added to a simple calorimeter containing 25 milliliters, 1.0 molar sodium hydroxide. Again, information can get you number of mole for NaOH. So the temperature of the resulting solutions increased by 7 degrees Celsius. So we have this delta T. Calculate the enthalpy of neutralization or sometimes it's called heat of neutralization. So we want to calculate enthalpy of neutralization. It should be in negative sign. Assume the density and the specific heat capacity for the finer solutions are the same as water. Okay, in this case, because we know that acid yeah, with base will produce salt and water. So the products over here, we call it as the salt solution. It's a solution. Don't forget thermochemical equation, delta H, you put it as a negative, as we want to find this value. So recall that definitions of neutralization say that the heat release when one mole of H2O is produced. Okay, so we focus this H2O. So we want to find the number of mole of H2O produced when we react this much of HCl with this much of NaOH. So from the informations here, we can get the number of mole HCl, number of mole NaOH. And if you realize, the number of mole for both of them are the same, 0 
So there is no limiting reactant in these questions. So according to the balance equation, one mole of HCl, one mole of NaOH will produce one mole of H2O. So the number of mole of H2O is the same, 0.025 mole. All right. So the next thing you need to identify for the question is heat will be re released from this reaction and it will absorb by only the solution. Okay, as no information about calorie meter is given. So remember that if you have the base, in this case 25 milliliter sodium hydroxide, and you have your acid 25 milliliter HCl. So when you add both of it, the total volume is 50 milliliter. Okay, the total solutions formed in this case is 50 milliliter. So if the density is equal to mass over volume, so mass of solutions form 50 milliliter times with 1 gram per milliliter to give you 50 gram. Okay, take notes down. The density of water equals to 1.0 gram per milliliter. So the volume will be the same as the mass. So as I mentioned just now, the heat will be absorbed only by the solution as no information for calorie meter. Therefore, heat released from neutralization is the same as MC delta T. Mass of solution, specific heat capacity of solution, and the change in temperature. 50, 4.18, same as the one for water, and the difference temperature 7. The answer is 1463, or the unit will be in Joule. So in order to find your enthalpy, we will use stoichiometry. So for 0 0.025 mole of H2O, it released this much of heat. And if you want to find enthalpy, you need to form one mole of water. So when one mole of water is formed, this much of energy is released. And finally, to write in the unit kilojoule per mole for the enthalpy. Enthalpy of neutralization equals to negative 58.52 kilojoule per mole. So remember to re rewrite this again. This will be your final answer. So again, for this stoichiometry, this one refers to the Q for any amount of water form. And the bottom one will be the enthalpy because of this one mole of water. All right, so that's the end of our chapter 2.2 with four example questions. So next, please attempt your exercises in chapter 2.2. There are 10 questions given. Okay, please practice and understand and try to apply the skills to extract information, whether they are first scenario, second scenario, or the third scenario, and how to apply a suitable formula for Q. So I'll see you again in the next video. Thank you.